I greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. This is indeed the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Our call to worship this morning is recorded in number 21, verses 4 to 9, and it reads as follows. They travel from Mount Baal along the route to the Red Sea to go around Edom. But the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God and against Moses and said, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There is no bread, there is no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people, and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it up on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made the bronze snake and put it up on the pole. Then, when everyone was bitten by the snake and looked at the bronze snake, they lived. This is the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Beloved, let us remain in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal Heavenly Father, Lord, you are the giver of life and the giver of every perfect thing that we have. Thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed upon us and for your grace and your mercies, which is new every morning. Father God, we thank you that just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Lord Jesus came to earth to be made sin on our account and was lifted up on Calvary's cross so that by faith in him we have life eternal. Bless our service, Lord, the reading of your word and the teaching thereof. We ask that you would bless us now as we worship and praise your holy name. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
is just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. Let's unite in prayer. That the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. Now, beloved in the Lord, we are now observing the fourth Sunday of Lent. Lent, as I always say, a time of repentance and reflection. It's an opportunity for us to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, today's lesson deals with John 3, verses 14 to 21. And I just want to refresh your mind where this whole chapter starts off. It's a conversation Jesus had with Nicodemus, the Pharisees. He came to Jesus at night to ask Jesus about the kingdom of God and the requirements to enter God's kingdom. And we all know about the dialogue between Jesus and Nicodemus. And the more Jesus was explaining to him, the flesh gives birth to the flesh, but the spirit gives birth to the spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with anyone born of the Spirit. And Nicodemus then continue with his conversation and ask Jesus more and more about what he meant. Jesus in turn reminded him of his position. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and yet you do not understand these things. So Nicodemus was a teacher, but could not separate the flesh and the spirit. Nicodemus was in no position to understand what it means if you talk about things of the body. Like Nicodemus today, we too have the challenge, my beloved brothers and sisters, of understanding God's truths. Because we do not want to let go of the things of the flesh. But in verse 12, Jesus is changing the direction. He is speaking in third person. I've spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How oh, then you will believe if I speak of heavenly things? Jesus is telling him that he does not even understand what's going on in this very ordinary conversation. So when I start unpacking things of my Father in heaven, things of the Spirit, how would you understand the people in this? Verse 13. No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And Jesus proceeds with verse 8. So that Jesus proceeds with the verse in the New Testament. 40. 
Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. From an earthly kind of conversation to a very high level of spirituality. But for us to understand what Jesus meant when he said, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the world in the soul, the Son of Man must be lifted up. Jesus indirectly referred to himself. But let's have a look at what happened in Numbers 21 verses 4 to 9, as they traveled from Mount Hor along the route to the Red Sea to go around Edom, but their people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God and against Moses and said, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There is no bread, there is no water, then we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people, and many Israelites died, beloved. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it up on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, they lived. God didn't tell Moses things like, or the Israelites then, for healing now because they are dying. Look at Moses for salvation. God never said, Look at man, save you. God never told them to fight the serpents and defend themselves. To trust in their own strength. God never advised them to trust in their own strength, beloved in the Lord. God never told them to heal their own wounds in order to be saved, to save themselves from death. God never said to make an offering or sacrifice, appease God in trade of salvation. God never made deals with them. You see, my friends, there was nothing they could have done to save them. There is nothing they could have done that fateful day to save them from death. In fact, they brought it on themselves to murmur against God and against the man of God. God never told them to trust in their own power. God does not share the joy with anyone of even that healing. He alone is the Redeemer. God is the God of power and salvation. Only He was at liberty and in position to save them from this condition. The fact is, though the snakes were there out of their own free will, the snakes were there, beloved, because of God's anger. God dealt with their disobedience. He dealt with their moans and groans. God dealt with it. But the same God, when they call upon the name of the Lord, rescued them. God rescued them 
because the snakes were there all along. It just this time God withdrew his protection from them for that moment. God is angry, but the same God rescued them. And what was necessary for redemption that day is to look up to the snake. The same snake that bit them became the sign of God for healing. And whoever is up on the pole, on the tree, the Bible says, is cursed. By looking at this bronze snake, was the way of healing. God instructed them to look at the snake. And to look at the snake, they did not have to do anything. They did not have to defend themselves. The only thing, God asked them to do nothing. To trust in Him. To look up and face the hand of God. And see the hand of God delivering them from this deadly snakes. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, beloved, that anyone who believes may have eternal life in Him. Jesus is the Son of Man. John 8, 28, so Jesus said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, and that I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the Father has taught me. Jesus, as Son of Man, now refers to Himself. He refers to himself as the Son of Man and is mandated by the Father but does nothing out of his own. Would play, would take the place of the snake for redemption, the sinful people like us. Jesus was cursed. Anyone who is hung on the pole is under God's curse. Galatians 3 verse 13, Christ redeemed us the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone who is hung on the tree. So Christ became the serpent in the Old Testament. Christ became sinful Christ, otherwise there was no justification, but he took our sins upon his shoulder and he took it up and nailed it to the cross and it was not nailed that kept Christ Jesus on the cross. It was his love, his compassion, his passion, his mercy. His grace. But because if he did not remain on the cross, he could have ordered thousands of angels to redeem him. But it, by choice he didn't do it. He became that snake. If we look up to him, if we look up to Jesus, our lives will be healed. Will never be the same. Christ went to Calvary, and the prophecy of the Old Testament of Moses, symbolically looked up the snake, was Christ. Told the story of redemption is through the cross, is to be cursed, is to be declared sinful on the earth of the world. In conclusion, beloved, Isaiah 45, 22 says the following, 
look to me and be saved. All you ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is no other. I repeat, look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is no other. If we want to be saved today, Look at the cross. Look at Christ. If you want to be a better person today, look at the cross. Look and remember what happened at the, on the cross. If you want to be free of sin today, look at Jesus on the cross. If you want to live today, look at Jesus because we are all dead. Because of Jesus, we will have life to all eternity. If you're giving up today, whatever the challenge may be, look at the cross, beloved. If you want to say, I'm surrendering today, oh, surrender, amen, to Christ alone. Because He paid the price for your freedom. Look. To me and be saved. All you ends of the earth. For I am God and there is no other. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. May God give us the courage to look and see. That salvation is through the cross. And the cross was empty today, but it wasn't empty that day. Because it wasn't empty that day, beloved, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Accept Christ as your Savior, as your Lord. Accept Him. And Christ is forever waiting for us. Because it's his invitation. Come to me, all those who are weary and heavy laden. My Jesus will give you peace. My brother and my sisters, you can only find that peace in Jesus. As Moses lifted up the sea. So he is the man of the world, the Son of God, the Son of Man, the Savior, Jesus Christ, had to be lifted up, had to be crucified, so that we can be forgiven. May God bless you as we reflect on this word, now and always. Amen. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Sing it again.
Sing, you are Alpha and Omega. which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In humility and thanksgiving, we come to thine throne of mercy and grace, through thine Son, our risen Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. We praise thee, worship, and thank thee for thine word today. For our faith comes from hearing, the message and our belief come from the word of Christ. We thank the Lord Jesus for going to the cross and enduring the horrors and shame so that we could be saved. May we also acknowledge our sin and come to thee for a remedy as the people went to Moses and asked him to pray for their forgiveness and a remedy for their sin. Here in the middle of land, may we find some joy, may we find salvation and restoration of our broken relationships with thee. May we live by the truth in the light, and not seek thee at night and in the darkness. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, we lift thee up, Lord Jesus, and believe in our salvation and eternal life through thee. Lord, we also pray and intercede this morning for thine church, for thine children, but also for the lost, for those who seek, for those who need, and for those who are misguided. We humbly ask, Lord Jesus, that thou wilt show the path, grant the needs, and reveal the truth. And we humbly petition thee this day for the people suffering in Ukraine. Please let thine will be done in mercy, restoration, forgiveness and peaceful resolve. Lord, in thine mercy, please hear our prayers and our anguish, verbal and silent. And please grant our prayers according to thine will. Also accept our prayers of thanksgiving for thine unmeasurable blessings upon us. Forgive us our many transgressions. God, guide, 
heal, protect and sustain us, and give us a willing spirit to love and serve Thee. Through our risen Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, in His name and for His sake we pray, with eternal thanksgiving. Amen. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us, now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace and lift up the Son of Man. Look at Him, all the things.